Hey YouTube, CubeHamster here with a new video. Um, yesterday or the day before, I'm not sure actually, I released the video of my rotating combination lock. At the moment set up with over a billion uh, different combinations. And as promised, I'm gonna yeah, now show you how it's done. However, I'm not gonna do it in one video. Uh, that would be that would make the video a bit too long. So it's gonna be a two-parter. Um, in part one, we're gonna set up the feed tape and all the information, all the stuff down here, the pink circuit, the red circuit. But uh, any, yeah, anything beyond this point where I'm standing now over there, we're gonna do in the in part two. So yeah, let's get uh, let's get started with part one. First off, we have to start with the the non-sticky pistons for the feed tape. And I'm going to build this above ground. So I'm building two blocks above the ground. That's because there's there has to be some circuitry below ground. Um, I'm I'm color coding everything, and trust me, if 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 you're ever doing complex uh, wiring, it's the only way to do it. You really have to. It, it, so if you're playing uh, on survival, which is obviously going to make this a bit more difficult, uh, even then, personally, I'd recommend that you uh, <coughs> that you use the, the color codes. And I mean, even you could use like dirt and sandstone, and cobblestone, stuff like that. That that's also a sort of color coding. But if you have uh, access to high quantities of wool, then I definitely recommend using uh, <laughs> using it. Anyway, so we started out with uh, we start out with this. You see here. Actually, gonna lower the settings a bit. Should be plenty. We start out like this. Um, so we have four different colors for four different time delays in a moment. Now we're gonna go six block. Six blocks away from the top, uh, from the top green pistons, I'm gonna put two pistons facing down next to each other, and this is gonna be the blue one, which is exactly opposite to the other circuit. And down here, we're gonna get actually not yellow. We're gonna get orange, and this is again. I'm just placing these blocks in order to be able to put these down. So like I said, orange, which is exactly opposite to that one. Then we're gonna get yellow. So we have yellow. And now below that, So you should have ended up with something like this. Now let's continue. Now let's already put in the the feed tape because we have we have easy access now the way it is. Um, it alternates between glass and wood. And yeah, I guess I could type it. We should just do that. The sequence is zero 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 zero. So four of those one one one. Then zero one. Zero one one zero zero one, and yeah, <laughs> command not found. Okay, but uh, that sort of loops itself. So let's do that. So we got zero 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 one one one, and now we don't place a block there, but we actually place it above. So zero 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 one 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 one, and then uh, zero one zero. One one. I'm guessing I'm gonna also put it in the description because it's kind of an annoying, not easy to remember code. Um, but yeah, that's so. That's that's the the feed tape. And now for the display, I recommend just using I mean the 16 different colored wool, and we have 16 inputs. So personally, I'd recommend just 
going ahead and uh, using all that. And it doesn't exactly matter what color you put where, because it's, it's all just for show. Let me just get the other ones. Make sure you have all 16 colors. Oh, I messed up there, it seems. So there, that's all 16 colors. And then we'll continue. Okay. Uh, next up, we can already sort of make the display. Or at least sort of make out where the display is going to be. I'm just going to take these these five colors. You don't have to see all the colors. Oh, five colors, I said. So these five colors and uh, yeah, sort of make an indicator. I use glowstone. Obviously, you can use stuff, whatever you want. You could even, if you want to, place like a glass, uh, glass pane in there. Um, so that's for the display. Now in the middle above here, this is where I'm going to put my clock. It's going to be a two two tick clock. So let's already make that. Um, okay now. So let's make the clock. We need some redstone. We need non-sticky piston. Redstone torches, and we need a repeater. This clock also works on uh, multiplayer servers, so it's pretty sweet. It's one of the fastest clocks I know. Um, so we have these two pistons facing each other, and we knock this out here. Place some torches in there. Repeat it like that, repeat it like that, and oh, I actually have to extend this a bit so it has a yeah, sort of a four times five service area. And then we have the signals like that. And yeah, I always use close tone. And what happens now is whenever I place a block here, it activates the clock. And whenever the block is removed, removed, it stops the clock. And we're gonna, yeah, that's sort of the toggle for the clock because we can we can uh, use a sticky piston to place a block there and, remo and remove it. So that's how we control the clock. Um, now let's continue hooking it up to uh, to the feed tape. Okay, so we have our display, we have a clock, we have the, the pistons. I add this little area over here, but yeah, you don't really have to do that yet. Did it anyways, no problem. Um, but uh, I suggest because we have a clock, obviously we want to make this thing spin. So let's hook it up. I'm going to start with the green orange circuit. Um, it's it's kind of important that you put the delays and the positions of the blocks exactly the same as me. Um, if you don't, then it might explode, break apart, and uh, <laughs> we don't want that. So we have is one tick, one tick, and then on the orange down here we have a three tick. And yeah, this is sort of specialized uh, reason why I'm doing it like this. Um, the interesting thing is that the clock is actually spinning a lot faster than the, the feed tape. And the reason that's interesting is that <laughs> what I sort of did with the clock, I made it so that if you turn it off, it instantly stops. Um, <laughs> that's very important because Obviously, you want to stop it at the correct color, and if you mess that up, oh, this has to be a bit wider. If you mess that up, then um, you won't be able to uh, stop it at the correct color, and it will reset, and you will have to start all over again. Um, by the way, these blocks can later on be removed to adjust for the different uh, the different direction you want to spin the wheel. So let me just check, on the green one we have uh, one, one, and down here we have three, one, three, one. So that's all good, and 
the clock is spinning twice as fast as uh, the feed tape. But whenever I remove, if I remove this block, it will stop instantly. So that's very important. So make sure you use these three tick, three tick delays. Um, now, now for the other one. Delays are a bit similar. We have one one down here with some redstone all the way up here, and the, the, the signal reaches that barely, but it reaches it. Um, and then we go here and go up there. And make sure you go up here because if you have it like this, then this is going to act like a yeah a, a butt switch. Which we don't want. So redstone there. And on the yellow line here we have a three tick delay. So that goes there. That's the one side. And I'm gonna remove these blocks because in a moment we're gonna test the other direction. And now we go down here. Hook that up. Also with a Three tick delay, and the blue one we go like this and then up with a one tick delay. So that should all be cool. Um, yeah, I don't know, just for safety. So let's turn off the rain for a moment. So on the blue one we have one tick. Uh, and on the yellow one we have three tick. Three tick. One tick. And so now the signal can just travel to those. So let's test that one. So now it's spinning counterclockwise. Not incredibly fast, but the moment we stop it, it instantly stops, which is again very important. And later on we're going to have pistons that can place blocks here and here and here and here. And it was spinning counterclockwise and now it spins uh, clockwise. So that's how we change between the different directions. And again it stops instantly. So that's very important. Um, yeah. Now I already mentioned these, so that I mentioned that these can be controlled with uh, pistons, or are going to be controlled by pistons. So let's actually place those pistons. And that's also going to be sticky pistons. So there. So now the now the yellow blue circuit's getting power, and now the green orange circuit's getting power. And yeah, I want to be able to control the clock as well. And I'm going to use a different color for that. It's going to be a red circuit. Again, I'm going. I don't know. I'm going at a reasonable pace here. Um, if you think I'm going too fast, I don't know. I have not I've not gotten any complaints about uh, the speed of it at which I build stuff. So, so that now toggles the, the clock. So now clockwise, and if you want to change the direction, just flip this switch, and now it goes counterclockwise. That's how how I did it with uh, the other one, and that's how we're gonna do it here. Um, Now let's put down the the main control uh, the main controls. So we need some redstone dust, and I try and hook it up to the to the piston up there without any de delay. So that's why my uh, my corridor was a bit small, I guess. 
but hey, you're trying to stop the spinning wheel and obviously you want to make it stop really fast, so this should actually reach. So now let me demonstrate how fast it stops. Yellow. Pink. Orange. So it responds instantaneous, uh, instantaneously, which is very good. Um, and I've not seen uh, yeah, anyone sort of manipulate these repeated timings uh, to make uh, a spinning wheel stop that fast. So I guess that's new, or at least that's the first time I see it. Um, now to hook up the orange uh, circuit, which is a bit more complicated. Um, the reason it's interesting is that um, if you were to change the direction of the, the wheel while, while it was running, um, it would break. So we have to come up with something to make sure that it doesn't break whenever we do that. And yeah, I found a solution for that and I have no idea if it's the, the best solution for it, but yeah. It works, so I'm not complaining. Let me go up here. And we're going to hook this, or we're going to make a RS NOR latch down here. Just your standard RS NOR latch. Nothing special. And there we go. Now, if it was set up like this, um, changing this would not change the, the setting on the RS knowledge. While if it was set up like this, Changing this does change the, the settings on the RS NOR latch. So, that being said, uh, now we can hook this up to our pink circuit. Let's actually see how far this signal travels. Probably not far enough. Nope. Um, and the other thing I want is so you cannot change the direction while you're uh, yeah while you're busy uh, running the. Uh, feed tape so we have to actually hook it up we have to hook it up to this red circuit circuitry so while it is running this piston has to be retracted and at the same time this other circuit down here has to be extended Extend it like that. <laughs> so it's a bit lower. Okay, so let's go down there. Obviously, I want to time my circuits correctly. So I want that is on. This one has to be on. And while it is off, that one has to be off. So while it is running, this one has to be extended. Again, I'm not doing this exactly the same as the other one, but it doesn't matter. There. And while it is running, that one has to be turned off. And let's add a little delay there so that when it's running and it turns off it actually takes a bit of time 
for those things to retract. So now, um, spinning that direction. And switching this does absolutely nothing. And then when I turn it off, oh, could be a bit more delay if you ask me. So let's do it again. Nothing's happening until you stop it, and then these pistons go down. And uh, yeah, sort of like transistors and. They changed the, the setting on the RS Norledge. So set re reset changes. But uh, yeah, I think this is also very useful. I've never used uh, used this kind of circuitry yet, but uh, I'm sure it will come in handy in the in the near future. Uh, okay, now we've had that, and that brings us down to yeah the input mechanism mechanism for the the feed tape. Mm -hmm. I'm taking, I mean, we got six pistons next to each other and I'm sort of going for the, the middle four. And I'm gonna play some torches below that. And down here. Also gonna place some stuff, some repeaters to power those torches. Like that. And then in front of these torches I'm gonna place some repeaters. So we have some stuff down here. R torches that are below the feed tape. Not the colored feed tape, but the, gla the glass wood one. And then if we go down here and we have our torches. You see this one is turned off, and this one is turned on. So now I'm taking the information uh, from the feed tape. And that information is then gonna eventually, just like the next step, it's gonna eventually, or yeah, that's actually a bit further ahead. That's gonna be feed it into, uh, yeah, the decoder. Now, normally, I don't, I don't want it to uh, take the information. Only at certain intervals do I want it to take information from the feed tape. So, in uh, in order to do that, I'm going to have to take information from the, the activation lever. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go we're gonna go down here all the way down here and use redstone. So we're gonna go down here and once we're down here we're gonna do something which I Yeah which I sort of already explained in one of my previous videos, which was called uh, uh, Redstone Repeater Facts. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set it up like this. And what this will do is now whenever I... Let's actually continue that a bit. Now, whenever I activate uh, the clock, this will do absolutely nothing. But the moment I turn off the clock, it will send a short pulse. And it's exactly that pulse which will turn off these repeaters, will turn on these torches, and when these torches are lit up, then it will take the information from the feed tape. So, make sure that this one's set to 4 and this one 1, because I want the... the the length of the pulse which we're going to send through our system is it has to be uh, four ticks. So make sure you set it up like that. Okay, so now now we've set up uh, four four pieces of information, which is the the four pieces of information we take from the tape feed. But 
there was actually another one, which is the direction of the feed tape. So what we have to do is we have to take information from the feed tape as well. Make sure that you take it from beyond the torch. And we're going to take that information down here. So let's put some dust. And I'm actually going to use a torch here. Sense it down here. And at the same time, I have to have a repeater here. So now this is getting overflown. So if it wasn't for this torch, this would be turned off. But the torch is there, so it's turned on. And that means that this can never let uh, a pulse through except for the moment we used uh, the red circuit you see over there, which we used already before. And obviously if this is turned on and this is turned off, this is still turned on. So that's how I filter my directional signal. And uh, no idea why this was already there. <laughs> Forget about that. Um, what we have to do now is uh, we have to hook this up. So what's going to happen? Uh, eventually I want a signal here with a four-tick delay. And before we get there, there's I need to have two ticks of delay with this circuitry. So how are we going to do that? That's a good question. Um, Be careful because there's, um, yeah, that thing is going to interfere. It's not something we want. Let's do it like this, actually. Like that. Then it should work. <laughs> Probably doing this differently than in the, in the original. But screw that. So now this uh, this the redstone dust turns off the torch. Interesting fact, though, if it wasn't for this block, it actually wouldn't. So make sure you place that block. Um, that's a, a weird quirk, I guess. So that's now set up, and now this turn torch up here should be turned on. There we go. So five pieces of information or five bits of information good for 32 combinations, 16 from the feed tape and multiplied by 2 by different directions, so 32. Um, so much for part 1 of this video tutorial. In the next tutorial we're going to talk about uh, the decoder, the RS knowledge array, the reset lines, uh, the delays in the reset lines and the set lines. Um, but we have the input mechanism. So uh, it works and stops fast, goes the other direction as well, so it all works. And we have the little pulse going down here with this setup. So uh, for the most part uh, we're halfway. Um, and who knows, maybe someone comes up with a, another interesting use for, for this circuit. I mean I hooked it up to a combination lock. but. Uh, who knows, you might be able to hook it up to something else as well. Um, as a conclusion, um, yeah, I want to talk about something else. Uh, I mean, most of you guys have been uh, subscribed to me for a while now, and some of you guys are new. And then there's some of you guys that have not subscribed to me uh, yet. Um, uh, I actually uh, have sort of have a goal on YouTube. Um, and I'll tell you what my goal is. Um, in real life, I'm a, a science teacher. I teach science in high school. And I really enjoy uh, enjoy my, my work. And I really, I don't know, I'm probably going <coughs> to talk about Minecraft a bit with students as well. That'd be fun when we're talking about uh, electronics stuff, uh, stuff like that. But um, yeah, what, I, what would be cool for me is I work in a high school that has 1,600 students. And 
that's sort of my goal subscriber wise on YouTube as well. I think it would be really cool if I could reach uh, 1600 subscribers on YouTube. So um, if, if any of my videos have uh, helped you and you want to do something in return, then um, you can uh, by subscribing to me. Um, it <laughs> I'm already really happy with all the one all the people that subscribed to me so far. But uh, yeah, reaching that goal would be uh, would be awesome. <laughs> Just having having the same amount uh, of subscribers as uh, the students in my high school. So uh, if you want to help me out and uh, you haven't subscribed already. Um, I would find it awesome if you do. And um, yeah, with that, I'd like to conclude this uh, video. And be sure to be tuned uh, for part two of this tutorial. Anyways, thanks for watching. And uh, have a good night. And uh, good luck with uh, your current projects. Bye-bye.